Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. Today we're taking a look at cracking the Konami M2 encryption. This is part two. I'll leave the link in the description below to the first part, which you guys seem to really enjoy, so I really appreciate that. If you do me a huge favor before I get in, if you hit the like and subscribe button, it definitely helps us out. What we're looking at right here is a chip dumper as well as an adapter so we can dump the BIOS from this M2 board in case we need to do any BIOS related hack. We'll be able to have a fresh copy just to make sure that the MAME dump is incomplete or something like that. I want to have a fresh copy off the chip itself. What we're going to be doing right here is we're just showing you guys what it looks like when a traditional working board loads up and this is the revision A BIOS or the first set of BIOS files that were sent out for the M2. We're loading up Total Vice and you can see all the different checks that are going to happen. That EEPROM check and the mass ROM check, they're all going to be okay. So this is going to let us boot into the game itself. And what we're trying to do in this video is try to down convert this board into a revision one BIOS because it's my belief that we can actually modify the board to get it to boot games it was never supposed to. So what we're doing here is we're taking the four screws off the standoffs so we can disconnect the motherboard from the PCB stack because we need to get down to the JAMA board so we're able to pull the revision one BIOS for Total Vice off so we can dump that later in the video and have a fresh copy of that. You need to be a little careful when you're disconnecting these. The pins and the connectors are pretty sturdy, but I really don't want to get into having to bend the pins back to make my existing boards work. I hate taking apart my own stuff to try to fix a project, but you kind of have to sometimes. What you're looking at right here are these two chips. The one on the left is going to be the 7K EEPROM, and that's what's going to hold the code from the front of the disk to allow the games to boot. So like I showed you in the previous video, I have a chip puller, but I don't love it. It kind of just kind of sketches me out sometimes how much, how much force you need to get that chip out. So I just go with the flathead screwdriver here and wiggle up on each end and you're gonna see that chip will pop right out and all the pins are fine. So I recommend doing that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that BIOS into the board that we're working on. So we've gone from the second revision BIOS chip to the first revision BIOS chip. And then we'll just go ahead and put the top M2 motherboard on, creating an entire set. Now granted, we're still missing that third PCB and we need to work on that, but in this video, we're just trying to get this board to execute code because I don't know if it's working. And you'll see we got some weird colors going on here and that BIOS chip wasn't seated perfectly. It was a little bit of a looser socket than the total vice board. So all I'm gonna do is reseat it and you're gonna see it works perfectly fine with all those colors there. But when we do try to test a disc, and this is something that I know is not gonna work, we are gonna get that hardware error and we know we're gonna have to get back into the hex editor and move some stuff around. So all we're doing right here is we're getting fresh dumps of Total Vice and Polystars off their original disks. I just want to make sure that I'm working with the cleanest files possible as opposed to something I downloaded. That way I know at least the source files I'm editing are original and they won't have any inherent problems. Maybe somebody changed something in the past. So now in Hex Editor, all we're going to do is we're going to change the disk key codes over to the Battle Trist key. So we're going to be doing GX636JAC and we need to change the date from 1997 to 1998. Both Total Vice and Polystars came out in 1997, and Battle Trist came out in 1998, and part of the checksum value is in hex. It isn't written out, but 1997 appears right here, and we're just going to make that 98, because that is part of the check. It's going to check for the GX, it's going to check for the 636, and then it's going to look at the region code, which is going to be JAC. So once you change all that around, you're going to be able to at least spoof that information, so it's good. And now all we're going to do is we're going to burn a disk and we're going to check it with the Opera file system reader. That way we know that it's something that would work in the drive if in fact we've done this correctly. Because sometimes the burns just don't like to work because the byte sector is larger than a traditional file system. Sometimes even if it says it completes correctly, it actually won't. What we're going to see is we'll drop down, we'll open up that drive and we have everything we need. So that is an M2 disk. Unfortunately, when we went in and put the disk in, you're going to see very quickly that it did not work. Whatever is on that 7K ROM did not match. Now, I've never actually swapped the BIOS on these boards. It was always my presumption that you could down convert them. But as I'm working and as I'm doing this commentary, I wasn't 100% sure if it worked and we get a hardware error. What we're going to try as well, the second disk, we're going to hold down the test button because that does rewrite the EEPROM, but it's not going to give us anything in return and we're just going to get that same hardware error again. So right now we are still dead in the water and it doesn't matter what I try. This is total vice right here. It's going to attempt to load, but once it gets to that 7k EEPROM check value, it is going to fail completely. And this was very perplexing to me the entire time. I wasn't sure why, because this theoretically should work. I was a little bit concerned that this chip on the right was slightly different between the two board revisions, but I really didn't think that that's what was going to block us, and I was really confused until I actually started looking at the board a little closer. 
and I found that there were two serial number stickers on the board. I took them off and I put tape on them. One ends in CK and the other, if you read it backward, ends in AK. So I started looking at the rest of my boards and I started wondering, this was listed as a Battle Trust board when the buyer bought it, but what if that listing was wrong? What if it's another game, something like Heat of Eleven? Because my Heat of Eleven board has this double sticker as well. So what I did was I went in and I changed the GX703 versus 636. So what you're taking a look at right here is the Battle Trist number, as well as the Heat of Eleven number, and that is the key code for the discs, and there is Polystar. So all I did was I wrote 703, JAA02, over the hex value of 623, JAA02, and I went ahead and burnt that disc, and I popped it right into the drive to see if it would boot. And what we're going to find out, as you watch here, is that we actually did crack the code. This was never a Battle Trist board, and it was only through researching around the board, not actually thinking from a technical perspective, but doing a little bit more investigation work did we find out that we were working in the wrong direction the whole time. That EEPROM check works perfectly fine. 8Q mask ROM is just going to be the BIOS, and now we are executing code on the screen. So this board has been brought back to life. Now it's only working on the revision A BIOS, and we still can't get it to boot anything that requires that real-time clock check, but we were able to spoof a board by switching the BIOS out to make sure it runs. So all we're going to do here is we're going to dump the original BIOS from my total vice board. That way, when I get another burnable chip in, I'll be able to write a BIOS for the owner of this board so he can put the BIOS in and play games. As I'm doing this, I'm just going to leave a little text note here so I know exactly what bank each dump goes to. Because there are four banks and there are dip switches, I'll just indicate what position the dip switch needs to be in to access each bank. That way when I write this BIOS to another chip, I'm able to put everything where it needs to be. Because if you take the dump from MAME, you get the main BIOS for the board, but the CD-ROM controllers are on alternative banks. Because one, I burnt a chip with just the information from the main BIOS and didn't touch those other two banks, I was able to boot the board perfectly fine, but I was not able to make the CD-ROM drive do anything. It did not receive power, it was unresponsive to buttons, so this way we're able to reproduce that BIOS as well as have full control of the CD-ROM. I did that off camera, I was just playing around, it's not something I recorded, but it's been done and the chip's burnt, it didn't work, I tossed it, no big deal. But now that we've dumped all four of the different banks, well I mean three, one is completely blank, we could put the second revision BIOS on that blank bank and we could just have a little switch going to the different banks and grounds so we could actually create a dual booting BIOS. That's something we'll do in another video. I don't know if we'll actually do it, I may just give them two BIOS chips, see how I'm feeling about that. But there you go. And you can see as we put the total vice back together, it boots perfectly fine so we didn't really harm anything by popping that BIOS chip. Do be careful when you take them out. It can sometimes be problematic. Don't ruin your hardware trying to fix somebody else's is always my opinion. But short of that, we were able to crack this board and make it execute code and it now runs two or five games. Short of that, we will be back with more in this series. It might take us a couple weeks because we still have a lot of stuff to research into hacking that BIOS. But if you do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys Tuesday with another episode. Bye-bye.